Hello and welcome to the third part of my uh, CPU tutorial. I'm Rick and in this part we're going to handle the basics uh, of the interface. Uh, not the uh, how the CPU interfaces with other devices, but uh, the user interface we're using to co like configure the CPU, load stuff into the compiler and actually write some code. Uh, well, yes, if you go uh, to the Q menu, ta go to the tab wire, uh, you will find the CPU directly above the expression 2, which has a fairly similar interface, actually, talking about the context menu. And uh, yeah, we, there's a lot of cr stuff going on here, and uh, I'm going to uh, go it uh, from top to the bottom, step by step. Yes. Um, well, up here we can enter a file name for uh, loading some source code into the compiler. H however, it won't be compiled until we place a CPU, so we're going to use that later. In this text uh, field, uh, in this list, we can select uh, from the various uh, CPU um, text files, so yeah, the source code actually, we uh, saved under the, well, with the code editor or with the editor of your choice uh, under the proper directory, in the proper directory. Yeah, uh, also it looks like the E2 stuff. And it actually works like it. See, you got the little update button down here, it updates this stuff, and if you create a new file, it won't be there until you update stuff. Yeah. Load into compiler uh, just loads the text file that is selected up here. You can also use uh, the list field to select your text file uh, into the compiler. So it, you, the next CPU you will place will contain this source code and will uh, tell the compiler to compile it. Creating a new file uh, means just opening the code editor uh, with a empty file that still has to be saved, but. So yeah, that's like uh, just useful um, if you want to create a new project. We're not going to do that. I got a little, well, example project that do, does nothing at all, but you can learn how to control program, fro uh, program flow and basic arithmetics. Uh, well, yes. The code editor opens the code editor and the stuff down here is not really important. Um, well, yeah, you can select the model down here and uh, if you use the CPU ROM uh, it will be stored with the advanced uh, duplicator and if you uh, reset the CPU the stuff saved to the read-only memory, ROM, uh, won't be uh, flushed. So yeah, ju let's just open the source code editor with the file I created for demonstration. So yeah, this is the code editor. Looks um, a lot like the expression 2 code editor, doesn't it? Um, it ha you have the helper uh, up here, but not with the expression 2 documentation, but with a list of uh, all the stuff you can use, but probably won't at all, uh, with the CPU. And uh, well, I don't. S I, I wouldn't say that this is actually useless, but you're better off using um, your uh, in-game browser. This, yeah, stuff down here, and browse to the wiremod.com uh, homepage to search for the documentation there. But anyway, let's just look at the example program. We have the classic syntax highlighting and uh, what you might be seeing that we're missing the whole header f header stuff, you know, input, output from expression 2. If you don't know expression 2, uh, well, that's not s such a problem. Let's just get the, ba get the basic scripting out of the way so we can start um, actually uh, do interfacing with other devices in the next video. Um, a double slash uh, indicates a comment. Um, the comments uh, are not uh, compiled. Uh, that means that uh, 
the compiler will not process them and uh, spit out an error, but it will simply ignore it. Uh, this can be used to write useless shit like I did, but it uh, can and pr most uh, likely will be used uh, by you to comment your own source code either for the documentation if others are going to read it or uh, for remembering what you just coded yourself. You might be wondering if you can really forget uh, what you just coded and let me answer you this question. Yes, you can. And you most uh, likely will. Um, probably after a few weeks actually, but that might be just my uh, amnesia. Anyway, um, we start uh, with the basic commands. Um, yeah, this is just an example of the program flow. Let's just ignore that. Uh, as we, uh, as I told you, we have memory cell. Uh, the CPU comes memory cells. The CPU comes with uh, four uh, cells that we can uh, just use uh, as we want. Actually, uh, I could could just put. Uh, let's just say. Uh, 6,000, nah, 9,001, it's over 9,000, well, yeah, uh, into EAX, and, well, yeah, it will be stored in that. Uh, think of it uh, like a variable. Um, move, uh, the MOV, the mnemonic for the opcode to move stuff, will take the destination first and the source next. That means the uh, that we cannot write uh, move 9001 uh, EAX, but we are going to do it the other way around. In fact, all of the opcodes work this way. Um, yeah, uh, those who take uh, two arguments, actually, uh, the uh, ink just takes one param parameter and uh, yeah. This, uh, the destination, can be any memory cell. You know, the EAX is a memory cell. And, uh, or technically is a register. The general purpose register, uh, so you just don't uh, comment on that in the videos, because then I'm going to be angry and not post uh, any more videos for the next few weeks. Yeah. Um, the source can be anything uh, that is a number and yeah I was terribly wrong in my first two videos because actually they can be signed and they can be floating point numbers so yeah please excuse that you can point put one uh, dot one in there uh, 0 0.5 whatever you want but we are going to stick with 9001 so yeah this will delete whatever is currently in uh, EAX um, well yes this will delete it and uh, put 9001 in there so uh, this is one of the basics uh, this is the basic stuff if we want to have uh, like 20 in there uh, and now we want to add something uh, so we don't want to remove it we, but we want to add something. You know the basic uh, maths you learned in school? So we are just going to use the add mnemonic um, and put EAX as the destination again and we're going to like put 10 in there then EAX will now contain 30. Um, the sub mnemonic uh, works the Whoops, the same way. EAX 20. Now we'll we're going to have uh, 10 in there, and if we divide it by five, we're going to have two in EAX. Yeah, uh, the whatever you uh, just uh, try to. Um, do with the uh, destination it is going to set uh, be saved directly into the destination so we have no way of restoring the 20 uh, from up here well yeah this is basic arithmetic um, and 
trust me, you're going to do, a, uh, do it a lot. Basically, because you the CPU can do barely, uh, yeah, it can do something else, but this is the bare basics. You can uh, can use it instead of gates, and it's going to be faster and stuff. But uh, yeah, so okay, uh, yeah, I could mention the increment and decrement as well. Ink, as seen down here is just going to increase whatever is stored in EAHX by EAX by 1. This is uh, an opcode that only takes uh, one er argument and we have the decrement that is going to be the same. So still after this hilarious and ridiculous line of uh, opcodes EAX is still going to be 2. Well, yes. Let's just talk about the program flow now. In uh, expression 2, you give uh, the, the expression some um, conditions that will cause it to like uh, execute itself or it's going to execute itself whenever an input uh, changes. The CPU will not execute if you don't tell it to. So if we do uh, if we use this cpu it's that's fine we're still going to have two down here in e eax but it is not going to do it again it's uh, just going to uh, terminate and uh, not run anymore you can uh, you can like try to change the inputs till the ca cows come high you will not get it to run a run again that's where labels and jump commands come in so yeah, uh, a label is just going to uh, is just written like this, um, and yeah, you just created a level. Simple, ain't it? Uh, these labels look uh, like uh, commons. You can use them, uh, you, or you can use proper names to uh, make them more readable, the source the source code more readable. But they're uh, primarily used by uh, jumps. So if we want to loop this stuff, which of course does not anything, but it's for demonstration, yeah. Uh, we're going to use jmp jump main loop. Yeah. So when we execute the CPU, the CPU is going to uh, see I got a jump. And uh, yeah, I got this label. I execute all this shit, and then I s uh, it will see. Oh, there's a jump command. I think I better uh, jump up here where uh, the jump tells me to jump to, and then it's going to do it again and again and again. Of course, that serves no purpose here, but yeah. Um, well, uh, conditionals, nah. Yeah, I think this is going to conclude the uh, this part. I'm Rick, and in the next part we're going to do uh, some testing. So yeah, we're going to uh, have actually something to see, to look at, to uh, show off in front of your friends, and to uh, prove that we're absolutely nerds. See you later, bye bye.